Hey, Redcon Trader here, and welcome back to Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. So, Chaplain, as I was saying, pretty much everyone mentioned Fidelio and Repentance. I'm listening. Repentance might actually be a ship, a Cobra-class destroyer. Chaplain's eyes flash momentarily. Hmm, a ship called the Repentance... I'm not sure, but you might be right. Now that you've said it, I've remembered an interesting detail. About 12 years back, there was an attempt on Denz's life. Not many could have even gotten that close to him, let alone wounded him. But that assassin was a master of her craft. Denz always was a hardy fellow, and that's what saved him. That and his trusty implants. But the medics pretty much had to put him back together from scratch. When he finally emerged from the hands of the Sawbones, months after the attempted assassination, he kept chuckling about her being a sharp one, and that she was real angry with him for burning her father or her husband, or... I, I don't recall. And he was a ship captain. I vaguely remember that conversation, but I'm almost certain that the ship was called the Repentance. And that Denz even knew the names of the captain and the proud would-be Avenger. The woman's name was Leona, or something like that. And her last name? I wouldn't be surprised if it sounded similar to Fidelio. Yeah, that can't be a coincidence. That's got to be the same person listed in its will, right? It's my best guess. Let me remind you what he said. I owe Fidelio, if not for the repentance. Who else could he have been indebted to if not a vengeful daughter or lover or whoever she was, of a captain he'd killed. It would be a very dense thing to do, to leave all the money not to his wimp of a son, not to his idiot first mate, but to the cunning lass who almost killed him. Okay, well, I mean, assuming we have our who, do we have any idea where this woman actually ended up? She got away after the attempt, but I know that Den sent mercenaries after her almost immediately. Whether he found her or not, that I do not know. It seems unlikely he did, because if he had settled the score with her, he wouldn't then go and put her in his will, would he? Yeah, maybe. Well, at least we figured out the repentance thing. It would seem so. If we've guessed right, all that's left is Fidelio in the will. You know, while he was on his deathbed... Jens apparently mentioned something about dead eyes watching him. Hmm. That is strange. Who could have looked at him like that in his very own home? Some errant servo skull that was passing by? Maybe it was nothing more than a dying man's delusion? Servo skull. On the right track there, I think. I also noticed someone wrote something in the Book of Remembrance over there. They specifically mentioned Repentance, and signed it Fidelio. Huh. That's odd. I've been watching the guests, and I know everyone here. If you're not Fidelio, then no one here is Fidelio. Well, unless they were able to get in undetected. The area around the book is completely open. If Chaplin is telling the truth, and he really does know all the guests by sight... And the words can only have been left by someone with free run of the courtyard. Someone who wouldn't attract attention. Right, right, so that would suggest servant. Or servitor. Maybe disguised as a servant. I've got a sneaking suspicion that folks here want this Fidelio dead. Of course they do. And they still do. And they will keep trying. The inheritance is no trifle, after all, and the claimants are not exactly the placid types. Chaplin shrugs, as if he's talking about something mundane. Alright, so... Denz has essentially left his entire estate to the woman who mortally wounded him 12 years ago as payback for his attack on the Repentance. And what's more, based on the clues... She's actually somewhere nearby, here at this funeral. 
We also know something about dead eyes and the fact that the courtyard is completely open. I don't think an unknown person could have gotten in here and left those words in the book. Well, Lord Von Valancius, now it's all in your hands. I'm no sleuth, and I don't know what to do with all these clues. If you have some thoughts about Fidelio's whereabouts, find her. If not, come back to me. We still need to send Denz on his way, and deal with the matter of his estate. Yeah, yeah, I'll let you know what I find. And given the clues we've found so far, I think it's safe to say... There are going to be no happy endings here. A local servitor bearing the crest of the Administratum services. The patch on the servitor's uniform reads, Property of House Spallardo. Right, so he does have personal servitors here. I think y'all can see where this is going. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, that one's even got a unique model. I think that is literally the first and only female servitor we've seen in the entire game. If you didn't know what to look for, it would be easy to overlook this servitor, which may have once been a woman. The servitor's implants, the mechanical nature of its movements, the empty gaze, it's all there, but... Leona? Leona Fidelio. Silence. The servitor's eyelids flutter slightly, its gaze staring off into space. Deep inside its single human eye, dark as a well, a spark seems to flicker. Or is it just your imagination? Repentance. That single word causes the servitor's body to twist in a violent spasm. Something akin to a sob or a growl builds in its throat, and its mechanical appendages jerk convulsively. Chaplin's tall figure appears next to you. So, this is our heir, right? He pauses, mulling it over, then gestures for the administratum clerk who gave the opening speech to approach. The inventory of Denz's possessions. What does it say about this servitor? Let's see, let's see. One moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Section B1740. Personal effects of the deceased. Subsection servitors. Here it is. Oh, this is a rare one-of-a-kind unit. Commissioned personally by Master Boardo 12 years ago. The main function of this servitor is cleaning the house, bedrooms, vestibules, bathrooms. In accordance with Master Boardo's wishes, its free will was completely eradicated, and the parts of its brain that regulated pleasure responses were destroyed. But to a large extent, its memory and awareness were preserved. I kind of regret giving you that voice now, but you know what? We're in it, so... Chaplain, I'm sure you see where this is going. I believe so. Didn't I tell you that Denz, after he survived the assassination attempt, sent a whole squad of mercenaries to hunt down the woman who tried to kill him? Looks like he found her. Chaplin nods at the servitor. She was allowed to keep her memory and some semblance of awareness, so I suppose the mysterious writing of repentance, both here in the book and back at Denz's home, was done by her. The question that remains, of course, is why would Denz decide to make a servitor his heir? This is either his last and cruelest joke, or an incredibly ham-fisted attempt to make amends on his deathbed. I'd like to believe it's the former. Whereas I'm going to hope for the latter. Can a servitor even own property? This matter requires further investigation. We will have to go over codices, bylaws, statutes, regulations, from the last 400 years or so. The clerk pales a little. But we'll find the answer sooner or later. Or we could ask Lord Von Valancius to settle the matter in the name of his dynasty. This is footfall, after all. If a rogue trader says that a servitor can inherit, then that's how it's going to be. 
call everyone together. I have a few more questions before I execute my final decision. As you wish, your lordship. Chaplain chuckles. This ought to be good. I would ask the esteemed guest to stay for a moment longer. I was going to announce Denz's last will and testament after he was delivered into the flames. But the circumstances have dictated otherwise. And so, according to the deceased's will, all of Bellardo's fortune goes... Not to his worthless son Cass. Not to his brainless mate Dagon. But to Fidelio. A mysterious new heir. However, I believe a certain party would like to intervene in this process. Chaplin looks straight at you and chuckles. Who of you knows this woman, Leona Fidelio, or the ship Repentance? That's the cleaner servitor from our house. What's there to know about her? Her only outstanding quality is that it's hilarious how she wobbles and flaps her grabbers about when you kick her out of the way. I don't know about the servitor. I've got better things to do in life than look at furniture. And the ship? Huh. I think there was one cobra by that name or something similar. We were pretty, uh, gentle with it. Boarded it, I mean. Denz was on top of his game that day. After the battle, he dragged their captain to the bridge, all tied up. Sat him at the table with us. Uh, we were going through the captain's amasek. Hmm. So you're, uh, sure you want to hear everything? Did I misspeak? Right, right. Uh, anyway, the three of us sat there, me, Denz, and the captain of the Repentance, as the boys brought whoever was left of their crew, one by one, and we popped them. I bet Kakai over there remembers. He, he was there, too. And so were the twins. Dagon nods at a few of the guests. We three watched. And when the party drew to a close, we threw the captain on top of the pile of his crew's bodies and, uh, you know, as, as was Den's ways, torched him. Alive. Those were good times. It, it's a real shame Den's quit. I keep thinking if he hadn't fallen for this, uh, what you call it, peaceful life. Maybe he wouldn't have checked out. Maybe he would have lived for another 20 years. Fidelio is standing in a typical servitor pose. Eyes staring into space. Only the grips of its metallic appendages are trembling slightly. Perhaps caused by a malfunction. Or perhaps by suppressed emotions. Looking for release. I'm sorry you had to go through this. I know it's not much, but hopefully this execution provides some relief. Caspilardo, the first to guess where this is going, falls to his knees. Mercy! I haven't done anything wrong! I'm not a pirate, not a cutthroat, just a harmless drunk, and a single father to boot. Smarter than you look, Cass. Take your daughter and get out of here. As for the rest of you, the time for repentance has passed. Hi, Adelia. Dirtbags. This is the last time I deal with nobles. Well, Dagon, what can I say? You're you're not technically wrong. I'll make an example out of you. Show them no mercy. Alright, so first things first. Oof, we are starting right in the thick of it. Um Okay, well with with Cass out of the picture, there's at least not too many of them. Though they do have us flanked from pretty much every direction. We've got the Grand Strats up first. And then everyone else staggered behind. Ooh, Sniper. Okay. Sniper on our flank. That'll have to be a priority target. Though we also have to buy ourselves breathing room, because otherwise... Oh, Clerk, you too? Come on, man. I guess the wove was not true.
Right, so basically four notable threats. The sniper, the clerk, Dagon, and then the combat servitor tucked in the other corner. Plus a lot of filler. All right, let's thin them out a little. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. Will do. Oh, snap. <laughs> wow, okay, not off to a great start, but... But, you know what? That actually wasn't terrible. He did push the uh, clerk back, give us slightly more breathing room. Didn't actually cause us to lose any turns. Let's blast that cluster in back left. On it. Nice, yes. Wiped all three, dinged the combat servitor. Let's slay down zones. And Pascal. We'll get past hat going, then pin down the clerk. Five sacks, not terrible. Let's shuffle our kill zone. Right, can't overlap zones. I'll have to keep that in mind in the future. Another mook out. Clerk pinned. Let me lay down a quick buff, then we'll uh, we'll pull, see if we can provoke. Dagon. Let's try that again. I am a navigator, not a servitor. Nice. Obviously no provoke, but double pinned. And Adira. Let's finish this guy off. Can't have him clerking around behind us. Anything else? Clerk down, minor spill over to Dagon. We need to neutralize that sniper. We'll get our gent on that. Just looking for any bonus kills we might rack up. Yeah, we'll just uh, clear this guy up top. Another one out. 
push within throwing range. Rejoice in battle! And use the force. Perfect. Sniper prone. That buys us an extra round. Good thing, too. That guy's definitely a bit of a brick. Here we go. Okay, Valen. Obviously, I was originally going to have him go right for the sharpshooter, but that's. That is a slightly lesser concern now, so let's have him maybe go after someone else. I mean, really, we're not taking any of the three big targets down with a single shot. Not this early in the fight. We haven't had time to build up our stacks yet. We do inflict slow with every single target attack, but, but we can do that with Death Whisper. Yeah, let's um let's go over the sharpshooter. That'll make it easier to finish him off next round. And we'll just whisper the smoke. He's as good as done. See to it personally. You never stood nice. a chance. Oh, okay. Wow. Let's get to it. Dagon going full bore for Adira, which yeah, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Though he definitely paid for it. Oh goodness. Guys, I really assumed at least one of you would dodge. Alright, well, um... That's cool. Could be worse. I mean, technically we are headed right back to the ship after this, so we could probably skate without healing, but... But why take that chance? We've got 30-plus med kits. Let's get Dagon off Adira. Resisted, but that's fine. Adira can still walk away. Indeed. I will do my duty. That's why I like that move. Even if you don't force priority, it still protects the person you use it on. Oh boy. Let's uh, let's double team Dag. Damage nerf. Heal thyself. And shuffle front zone. Nerf those defenses. Dagon it just under half. And now we can try to pull him away again. Double provoke. In fact, if we can cluster them all up on the right, we might be able to double whammy this. Yes, perfect. Let's make a scene. Emperor, give me strength. And Dagon's out. 
as are the last two mooks, which just leaves the combat servitor and the prone sniper. Let's finish off the sniper. I'll make it happen. Who, if not me? Oh, wait, we do. We do have one more guy. Right behind us. Fair enough. Combat Servitor is obviously a much bigger threat. Let's pull him off. Nice. He's also slowed from that Death Whisper, so... So he should not be able to get off another shot on us. Not before we finish him off. Assuming we don't just kill him outright, that is. Right, right. Only clears the injury if it tops her off. Not a big deal. Solid hit, but he's still in. We'll have Argenta finish this guy off. Step off. Oh, come on. That elevation LOS strikes again. But you know what? That's fine. We have the martial arts perk, so he still got knocked prone. Let's finish the Servitor de Force. And now you. Argenza, hold very, very still. And that will do it. Chaplin is observing the carnage, unfazed. Dens would approve of a funeral like this. Now what? What are we going to do with Fidelio? The servitor woman is standing still. It feels as if her dead eyes are staring at Dagon's corpse. But it could be mere coincidence. Well, there's still the matter of the unresolved estate. Chaplin shrugs. The right Valer can't exactly make use of it. As you can see, and thanks to your hard work, the other claimants have no more claims to lay. Want to take the fortune for yourself? I think Dens would say you're welcome to it. You like people like you. People with gumption. I mean, it wasn't my first choice, but yeah. I can certainly put it to good use. Chaplin nods, and then he glances at the servitor woman. What about her? 
Oof. I mean, lobotomized, torn apart, put back together as a, a literal cleaning machine. Let's be honest, um, as much as I'd love to give her a happier ending, this poor woman died 12 years ago. She's just a vengeful ghost in the machine at this point, and her unfinished business is done. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't imagine anyone wanting to live that way. She's essentially just an organic computer now. But one that is also programmed to feel pain and rage and utterly incapable of acting of her own free will. Sorry I couldn't do more, Leona. Emperor Protect. Emperor, accept thy servant's soul, Chaplain says in a hollow voice. Chaplain looks at the coffin. I'd like to say goodbye to my old friend. I imagine the crematorium has got its furnaces up and running already, but I feel it would be kind of sad to just shove Dens in there like that. He was known as Jerry Can Dens, and he loved having his enemies drenched in Prometheum and burned. I think it'd be a nice gesture to send him on his way in the same fashion. Thankfully, it's easy enough to procure a jerry can of Prometheum on footfall. Havillard nods in approval. Fitting. Chaplin gives you a sidelong glance. Want to stay and watch? Guess I've seen it through this far. Might as well see it through to the end. Well... Let's get started, I guess. Oh, my. That feels like it might be a bit much, Chaplain. Oh, and we're done. I was half expecting him to explode with it. That that would have actually been somewhat fitting and poetic, but, uh... But I guess things ended about as well as you could hope for in this... This gritty and grimdark... Future. The Ripper. I assume better in some regards than a standard autogun. We don't really have anything to compare it to. Oh, here we go. Civitus pattern auto gun. Huh. Wow. Okay. The uh, Civitus actually seems to be better in most ways. The Ripper gets one extra rate of fire, but at the cost of damage potential and range. And then we also pulled a pair of Arsonist's Bracers. Grants plus five to tech use and plus three on flame weapons. Okay. Might toss those to Argenta. She hasn't really gotten much use out of those ballistic guards yet. And more vendor trash. I guess that's pretty much it. The Ripper, the Arsonist Bracers, the Civitus Pattern Auto Gun, and of course the plus four profit factor from claiming the inheritance. I don't really feel great about shooting Fidelio, but I mean, at the same time, I'm not sure there's really any coming back from something like that. Anything you know, else? not just the changes they put her through, but also just living that way for 12 years afterwards. Singularly obsessed with nothing but vengeance and rage. Though I suppose the real victim here, the person I'd probably feel the most sorry for, is maybe Adelia. 
Though again, I'm not really sure there was any way we could have reasonably helped her. She left with her father. The only way her father would have stayed is if we... If we had decided to execute him. I suppose in theory we could have handed off the inheritance to her after killing her father in front of her, but... That really feels like we'd be just perpetuating the vicious cycle of vengeance. Essentially turning her into a new Leona Fidelio. Yeah, yeah, I don't really see that working out great. Uh, one sec. I want to check a few things. The Emperor protects. Yeah, yeah, he sure does. Padre, I just uh, came from an interesting funeral of one Dens Bellardo. Is it true he was one of your biggest patrons? Yes, it is true. Over the course of his life, that reprobate had burdened his soul with many vile and egregious acts. His confessions were akin to a grand catechism, listing humankind's imminent vices and enormities. It was all the more painful for him to realize that of all the heinous acts he had committed, not one had been forgotten by the Emperor. Denz Velardo was afraid of death and that which would await him after. He hoped to atone for his misdeeds, yearned to convince, if not the Emperor, then himself at least, that he had been more than a conscious speck of malignant mold his entire life. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that certainly tracks. I mean, I guess... I guess everyone deserves a chance at redemption. I'm just not sure he actually earned it. Yes, and it is true for miscreants above all others. The greater the transgression the more miraculous and wondrous the repentance. Repentance, huh? Well, thanks. Padre, this has been an interesting chat. I'll uh, leave you to it. Is there money to be made? You know, Chaplin seemed like a halfway decent guy, all things considered. You know, relatively speaking, for a pirate Chaplin. But he was also a Drusian, and that, that definitely makes me feel better about not handing off the inheritance to the Drusians. Or Fidelio, for that matter. That aside, some uh, extra insight into Hieronymus there. A very interesting character. As well as uh, an answer to what the Chaplin was wondering. Whether uh, Denz was playing one last cruel joke, or just scared of whatever awaited him in the afterlife and desperately trying to make last-minute amends, and it, it definitely sounds like it was very much the latter. A scared, dying old man, desperately trying to use his last few days to undo at least some modicum of the damage he had inflicted on others over a lifetime of sin. A bittersweet ending at best. A lot of these events obviously played out long before we got involved, but at least we were able to steer it towards a somewhat satisfactory conclusion. And it does give us a lot more closure than we got back in Alpha. Posing as Fidelio led to a whole different wild goose chase as they all tried to kill us off so that they could claim the inheritance for their own. In the end, I don't think we ever even found out who Fidelio was. Though, to a certain extent, not knowing was also a small blessing because, you know, that was definitely a fate worse than death. Servitors are gross. That said, uh, I believe that is the last of our business on Footfall, at least for now. Obviously, we'll have to come back here later down the line, after we have secured Janus and found the appropriate food supplies to deliver. Though there will be a fair bit of space between now and then. We'll hit the pause button for now. We'll do one last lap just to make sure we're not missing anything else. And uh, we will pick up here next time. See you then.
Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Revenant, Eloise, Croaking LOR, Dragon Matrix 7, Dracket, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Excelsior, Goat Lead, James Tremay, Kazor, Mark Jemsa, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valen Rook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around.